In this video, I'm going to cover the ICT concept breaker blocks and how to identify it within the markets. So how do we identify this breaker block? So the formation we want to see is a low, high, lower low, and then a higher high. But where is the breaker block in this formation? The breaker block is within the low to the high of the range. And the breaker block is this up close candle. So this is where I want you to keep your eye on. When price creates the lower low, we want to see price both taking up the recent low we just created and also engineering sell side liquidity for this example. And when price makes the lower low, after that we want to see price both closing above the higher high or closing above the high, creating then a higher high. And then after that we want to see a retracement down into the up close candle which we made in the low high formation. And then after that, we want to see price going higher, targeting a strong drawn liquidity, which in this example could be this relative equal highs up here. So that's how we could identify a breaker block. So what if we were to trade this breaker block? So first of all, we also see the price creates a change instead of delivery. As we see right here. And then after that, we of course have our breaker block because we see the low, high, lower, low, higher, high. So the up close candle is our breaker block. And this down close candle right here, we don't include this within our breaker block, only the up close candle. So then what do we see right here? We see the price comes down, going into our breaker block. And then after that, targets the relative equal highs up here. So what if we were to take a trade entry off of this breaker block? So first of all, we could also include the change in state of delivery within our breaker block. But if we just were to take the trade entry off of the breaker block, we would of course take a trade entry right when we touch the top of the breaker block. But we could also take a trade entry when we touch the body of the breaker block. In this example, we see that the change in state of delivery combines with the body of the breaker block. So now let's just go over some scenarios. So the first scenario is of course right when we touch the high of the breaker block or the high of the low high formation. And then we could put our stop loss maybe at this low down here and then target the relative equal highs. That would already make a fine risk reward ratio but we could of course make it better. As first of all we see we have the change instead of delivery. So in that case we could enter the change instead of delivery also combining with the breaker box body. And that will make a better risk reward ratio, a 2.8. And if we didn't catch this trade entry, what do we have right here? We have a balanced price range. So we could also include that within a trade entry. So we have a lot of examples for this case, in this example. But overall, we would get a nice risk reward ratio. So now let's talk about how we could identify a bearish breaker block. So the first thing we want to see is a high, then a low, then after that a high high that takes out both the recent high we just created and also engineering buy side liquidity. And then after that we want to see a lower low closing below the recent low we just created. So now this identifies the bearish breaker block. And as we see here we have two down close candles. So in that case, we mark out the whole range because this is the whole breaker. And of course, the lowest down close candle is the sweet spot. But in this case, we mark out the whole range, which is these two consecutive down close candles. So this is the breaker block we want to use. So if we were to take a trade entry based off this breaker block, we could enter either at the low of it or we could enter at the consequent encouragement. But in this case, price fails to touch the consequent encouragement. So in that case, we could enter right when we touch the low of it and then put our stop loss maybe at this high or all the way up here. And then we could use standard deviations from the high to down to the low on the breaker block, basically. And then target either the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range, which is aligning with this so side liquidity or we target the minus four standard deviations. So if we were to put our stop loss all the way up to the higher high, 
and target by side liquidity. <coughs> In that case, it would only make a <coughs> 1.09 risk reward ratio. So in that case, we could lower stop loss. Maybe down here. And then target the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range. Or just so side liquidity. But that will also only make a 1.4 risk reward ratio. So in that case, we can move our stop loss lower, maybe to the higher, and then target the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range, which will make a 2 risk reward ratio. But if we were to target the minus 4 standard deviations, price will still hit it. But in my opinion, I wouldn't hold the trade that long. So that's how we could take a trade entry based off this breaker block. So for our next example, we see that price formed a low, high, then formed a lower low, both sweeping the recent low we created. See right here. And then we also swept sell side liquidity. And then after that, we made a higher high, where price closed above this high up here. So where is the breaker block in this example? It's this up close candle right here. And if we extend that out, we see how price respects this up, up close candle. So this is our breaker block. So if we were to take a trade entry based off this breaker block, we could potentially enter when price make the first retracement down into the breaker block and put our stop loss up at a place where we think the breaker block would most likely hold. So in this case, we just put it maybe right down here, and then target buy side liquidity, which could be up here. That will make a 2.2 risk reward ratio but in my opinion, that that high, it's going to take a long time before price reaches this high. As we see, it took almost a whole day before we reached that high. So in that case, I would probably go down into a lower time frame and find a trade entry based off the price would probably respect this breaker block. So down here on the one minute, what do we see? So we see right here, this is the breaker block range on the five minute. So what do we see right here on the one minute? We of course see a balanced price range. So we see the price took out sell side liquidity. Then we had a strong reaction to the upside. And what do we have in within here? We have a balanced price range from this high down to this low. So we have a balanced price range. So the reason we want to choose this balance price range right here is because if we use our OTE tool, we see it's within the OTE. So that's why we want to use this balance price range. So let's just say we were to enter off of the OTE, which is the 0 0.70, and put our stop loss at the low, and then target buy side liquidity up here that will make a 2.9 risk reward ratio and that took far less time than if we were to trade on the 5 minute so right here on the 15 minute time frame we see that we have a high low then a higher high and then a lower low so in that case we want to look for a breaker and right here we have two consecutive down close candles which is our breaker in this example so then, instead of using these two consecutive down close candles on the 15 minute time frame, we can go down into the 5 minute time frame and get a more precise view of the breaker block. So right here on the 5 minute time frame, we see that this is our breaker range on the 15 minute, but then we could just minimize that down to just this last down close candle. So in that case, we see how price respects this down close candle. So now we can get a more precise trade entry. So let's just say we were to enter at the bottom of the breaker block, then put our stop loss maybe at just the higher of this valley gap, and then target the standard deviations from the breaker block. So now let's just use the 15 minute standard deviations. And then target the minus 2 to minus 2.5 range or just the minus 1 to minus 1.5 range. 
and as we see from my we targeted the minus two to minus two point five range. We got a four score ratio, and we also see how price respected that, and even went all the way down to a minus three standard deviation. Then retested the whole fifteen minute breaker block, respected it, and then continued lower. So there are some areas within these breaker blocks that we want to have an eye on. So the first one is when we have more than one consecutive down close candle within a breaker. So this is came. Example, we have two consecutive down close candles in this breaker. We can use the one that's lowest. So the lowest down close candle within the breaker, as it tends to get respected. And we could also use that lowest down close candle as a breaker and use the close of that candle. So this one right here, as you see, that also tends to get respected. And as we also see, when price retested the breaker block, it just respected it with the body at the top of it. And then, as we saw before, continued over, taking out the sell side liquidity. So that's some areas that we want to keep an eye on.